This is class number three in a series of classes on how to get proficient with Lightroom Classic. Today, we're gonna to continue working on organization of our catalogs. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden. As a professional photographer, I build up quite a few images every year. With some of the new mirrorless cameras on the market, we can easily shoot at a much higher rate. When shooting wildlife, for instance, I'm regularly shooting at 20 frames a second on my Nikon Z9. So as you can imagine, that builds up a lot of images. So today, we're going to work on our organization and really try to drill down to find images inside of our Lightroom catalog. So let's get to it. So we see we have our catalog here and we're, we've got all photographs here, our all 21 photographs. We also have our collections that we have set up. You can see what we've done here. We've done some selecting. So we hit the letter P on a few that we want to put flags on. And then we have the letter X where we rejected a couple of images. And of course we also put a color on one of the images. So these are things that are attributes of your images that you've actually assigned to those images. So as we come up here and we want to do searches, one of the things you always want to do when you're doing a search, this is a global search. If you want to search all of your images, you need to be on all photographs. If you happen to be down here, you're only going to search in whatever is inside that collection. So keep that in mind when you're doing a search, make sure that you're searching. If you're searching, want to search globally, then search through all photographs. Now, a couple things that happen on these images. So let's say, for instance, we have this image here, and this is up in Oregon. We can assign keywords to it. So this is a little bit like data input. You know, we're putting information into each one of these files so that we can maybe search on it at a later time. So the way that we do that is we come over here to our keywords and we just type water and we're gonna, we'll do a comma and we'll put in Oregon. Now we've already used Oregon, so we can just click on it. It pops right up. And then we can also come down here and we can see that we have suggested keywords. So any keyword that you put in will now become in the, in the top nine suggested ones, right? So we'll click Oregon water as well. So these are things that on, on of these images, on this image, these are going to be the keywords that are associated with it. So if we come over here, for instance, this is in Yellow, in uh, Yosemite. So we've got California, we've got El Capitan, we've got Yosemite. We can put whatever we want on these and we can see that all three of these are, this is an HDR, which I'll show you in a little bit. But this is a, all of these images have the same keywords attached to it. So if we want to, uh, let's say we click on this one here of the Pelican, there's no keywords. So let's go ahead and we'll say Pelican. You know, it helps to spell it right. There we go. So Pelican, we know that's Pelican. We might say this is also going to be birds. And this is also going to be California. So those keywords are attached to that image right there. So as we go through, you can it, decide how much information you want to put on each image. But as you put in keywords, now those keywords are searchable. Now, we only have 21 images in this catalog, but think if you had like 10,000 images in your catalog, it'd be difficult to find all the Pelican images, right? So all we have to do is come up here to text and we're going to text by keywords and we're going to put in, watch this, P E L. Look, just a couple of letters and it comes up with the Pelican image. Now, if you've got Pelicans that are shot all year long in different locations, all those Pelicans, if they've been keyworded, are gonna come up in that search. So it's a really super way to keep track of all your images. Let's say you've got clouds or if you want all the images that you shot at Yosemite. These are all ways that you can search by keywords. So it's a really great tool to do. Now, the downside about it is you gotta take a little bit of time to put into keywording images. If you take that time up front, it's like any kind of data processing or any kind of uh, um, 
uh, information database that you're creating. When you put the time in up front and make a habit of it, then your images will always be easy to find. And, and this is mostly going to be concerned with when you're trying to find images globally. So if you're trying to go through all of your images, and again, if you have a huge catalog, you're going to want to drill down and find all your tiger images, all your monkey images. That's a simple way to do it. Now, the collections are also a simple way to work, and that gets you pretty close, right? Because if you went into birds, we'd see that, okay, there's a pelican. Now, maybe we're going to have 5,000 bird pictures in here, right? But what's going to ultimately happen is you can maybe then pick out the pelicans that way. Or if you had a lot of pelicans, just make a collection for pelicans. So either way, these are all ways that you can search inside of Lightroom, and it depends on how much work you want to put into it up front. So another way to search is through our attributes, and I use this almost on a daily basis. So we come up here to attributes, and we want to search, and we come up here to the top, and you can see that we've got any flag that we can work with. You click and do just flagged only. So those are only going to be the ones that are flagged. If we want to do rejected photographs, and this is a pretty easy way if you've got images that you've rejected. And I usually reject images that are out of focus or images that are just aren't going to be suitable for any kind of use, a shot of my foot or something like that. We would uh, put those as rejected and then I'll select them all. And then I'll just tell Lightroom, I'll hit the delete key and Lightroom will, will ask me, do I want to remove them from Lightroom, which is out of the catalog, or do I want to delete them from the disk and get rid of them forever so that they're really totally gone? So that's a way that you could import all of your images from a card and then go through and look at them closely and decide, uh, out, in, out, and decide which ones you want, hit those as rejected, and then when you come in and do a search on all rejected, just delete them from the disk, you never have to see them again. So that's an easy way to go on sorting all that out. And as you see here, we only have two images showing, right? We've got all photographs here, 21, but only two. And sometimes that's going to be a clue to you that maybe we have a search already in progress. And we do, right? We're searched for the, unflat, for the uh, rejected photos. Let's say we haven't decided everything. So now we're just going to go for anything that hasn't been flagged at all. Not bad, not good. And you can do another take through these to figure out what it is that you want to do. So generally what I try to do is I leave this on any flag. So that way I'm not doing a current search. You can also search by what we've done already. You can search by color. So let's say if we click on red, that's going to give us that one image that's been red, right? Out of our whole thing. So if you click on it again, it goes away and now you're back to normal. So that's a real simple way to create images and uh, label them however you want to label them. And then it's real simple to find. Now, the other thing that you can do, which is kind of a, a really cool way to make a collection. And this is a collection that's called a smart collection. Now, a smart collection is something that I use quite a bit. And the reason I do that is because I want to, uh, work on images that are I go into Lightroom Classic and then out to Photoshop and then back in. So let me show you a quick little demo of how that's done. Let's take this image here and we're going to right click and we're going to edit in Photoshop 2025. So Photoshop 2025 is going to open up and bring this image in and we'll be able to work on it in whatever level we want to do it, whether it be uh, a simple sharpening or whatever work we're going to do on that image. There it is. Okay, now let's just make a new layer for this. And we'll just go ahead and we'll just make something on this layer. We'll take our paintbrush and we'll just paint something across it so we can tell which one it is. All right, we'll just put that big bar across it. All right, so now we're done with that and we click save and it saves it back into Lightroom, and which is a really handy way to work on your images. So you're working on your images uh, and you've brought them into uh, Photoshop and now you, you're done with them and you wanna save them. We well, want them to go back into that catalog so that you can actually see them in the catalog. So let's go back in here. And you'll see now in our grid, we have our original 
And you'll see they're highlighted with gray because that means that they're stacked together. These are, these are two of two images together. And uh, it gives you the ability to see that, okay, this is our original and you can double check it down here because this is an NEF. And then this one, of course, has the black streak. We know that was a Photoshop and it ends in a PSD file, okay? So let's do it again over here. We'll just click on this image and we'll right click, go into edit in Photoshop, bring it into Photoshop and let's go ahead and make a new layer. And we'll actually make this layer, we'll make it a quick adjustment layer. I have a whole series on, on Photoshop stuff too, if you wanna check that out. Um, let's go into levels and we'll just brighten this up. Okay, so let's say that's what we wanna to do to this image. And I'm gonna go up and change the mode real quick, like so things go a little bit faster. We'll change it from 16 to eight bit mode. And then we'll go ahead and close that and say, yes, we wanna save it. And so let's go back into Lightroom. And sure enough, it's saved and it's saved right next to our original. So it's really easy to find these images, right? So now what I wanna do is I wanna make what's called a smart collection. So we come over to collections and we pull this down and we go to create smart collection. So in here, we're gonna say, we want this to be Photoshop files or PSD files. That's what we're naming our smart collection. And what we want Lightroom to do is to go and find all of our images that end in PSD. So let's go ahead and we're gonna come down here. We're gonna go file type down to file type and then it is and we pull down this and we can go to Photoshop PSD. So now what we've told Lightroom is we want to create a collection that will take all of our PSD files and put them there. All of our things that we've actually worked on in Photoshop and put them there and it's the file type that we've chosen and the term is is because you can pull this down and have other terms obviously is a Photoshop document. So let's go ahead and create now let's take a look at what we've got over here. We can see here that first off, you know it's a smart collection because it's got this little orange, little yellow gear next to it, right? So that's a PSD file. And sure enough, this has both of those PSD files that we originally worked on. So this is the cool part about this. Watch this, let's go back in here and let's go ahead and grab this image, right click, edit in Photoshop, And we're just gonna change the mode of this one too. That just makes the image a little bit smaller, especially for demonstration. And let's go ahead and take and add a new layer. And on top of that layer, we're gonna paint a little color. We'll take and paint red. And now we're gonna save it. So we're saving it back into Lightroom, just like before, we're saving it back into Lightroom, but check out what this has done this time. Now, of course, there's our image that's saved in our regular grid mode, but let's go down here. We can see our PSD files. That went from two to three. So that means that Photoshop, or Lightroom rather, will take your Photoshop images and put them into that smart collection. So now if you're working on these images, you can go through and always know exactly where your PSD files are. You can tell Lightroom to make whatever kind of smart collection you want. Let's say you wanna make a smart collection of all your, all your red files, right? So let's go ahead and make a smart collection. So we'll call this red tag. And we'll come over here to file type, pull this down and go to label color. And then it's asking what color it is, right? It is, and there's our choices, obviously. We're gonna say, oh, this is gonna be red. So we'll create that. Now what happens is we have a smart collection that is all the red tagged images. So again, if we come up here to our images and let's say we really like this one and we want to work on that later. So we give it a little red tag because we know that's exactly what we want to look at. We come in here down to our smart collection and sure enough, we have our two red tags so we can go right to them to work on them. It's a really great way to be able to find our images and and sort them really quickly. And so once you make these smart collections, you don't have to do anything. Lightroom does the rest. It'll just throw them into those collections and you can always find them. 
So a couple other ways that you can search, or last way rather that you can search, is metadata. So when we click on this, we can see that we can search by the year that it was photographed, the month, the type of camera that we used. We can, if we wanted to just look at images that were done with an iPhone, or this in fact was with a Z9. Over here, check this out. We can look at images that were shot with a type of lens. This was shot at the 135. This is shot with a 600. All these images are available that you can pull these down and make whatever kind of metadata search that you want. Because if you remember, let's go back in here. Let's go to none. We come in here and we're in our library mode. If you remember, we had metadata over here, right? This metadata is all the stuff that goes into your each photograph, right? So we could go into metadata and we could search pull this down and say, oh, let's go with ISO speed. So let's figure out what ISO speed was shot at 500. And these are all the images that were shot at 500. You see, it even included that Photoshop image that we worked on. So it will search super fast based on parameters that your camera has already instituted. So it's a really great way to search and find your images. If you like this kind of content, hit the like button. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon to be reminded of my next video. I always read and respond to all the comments in the comment section, so feel free to leave a comment or a suggestion and I'll get back to you. Also keep in mind that some of your comments will lead to uh, future videos. So if there's something you really would like me to do, then that's a great way to let me know about it. Another way is using my email address, terry at imagelight.com. If you send me an email, I'll put you on my mailing list and alert you of my new videos that way. So when you're done searching, you just hit none and that goes back to where you're at and you can just see all the images as your catalog starts to build. So this is a fantastic way to work. Next time we're gonna get into actually processing the images, the fun part of Lightroom Classic. So let's get into it next time. Thanks for watching.